welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight it's all about gaming and pop culture. Now, pop culture doesn't always mean superheroes and anime. It can also mean beautiful works of art. And to talk to us about that today, we introduce a very special guest. He is the creative director of Museum of the Future. Thank you so much for joining us, Brendan McGettrick. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about your role with the Museum of the Future. What is it you do on your day today? Uh, well, basically, I'm responsible for the exhibition content and the visitor experience, basically, within the museum. So all of the things that you kind of see on the exhibition floors, I lead the team of many people, many brilliant people that have made those. Incredible. And um, I know that you have an exhibition on gaming and how it comes into the world. What kind of things can people expect? Um, well, gaming, I think one of the things to say about it is that more than just kind of video games that are locked on a screen that people like associate with gaming, actually the kind of storytelling and the experience of what people expect from a game actually now influences things in the real world. So a lot of the things that we've built into the museum are kind of learning from gaming, learning from the interactivity that people expect, learning from the sort of storytelling that gaming has established, and now putting it into an experience where you can actually be physically present and kind of be part of it. So that's Brenda, would you like to tell us about some of the exhibits at the Museum of the Future that is connected to what you were just saying right now? Yeah, so all of them, I mean, so basically there are three floors in the museum that are taking place in the year 2071. So the, the concept of the museum, which is here, by the way, I've been <laughs> prominently <laughs> displayed in your backdrop. <laughs> anyway, um, the idea is that you kind of create future worlds for people to explore. So it's sort of like a combination of almost like a film set, and then it has uh, gaming elements of kind of interactivity and, and exploration. So um, yeah, the idea is that you, you visit a space station, you visit a kind of scientific institute for re responding to climate change, and then you, you visit a kind of wellness floor. So it's a very immersive experience, yeah. Yes, indeed. I, I was wondering, have you um, thought about doing virtual exhibitions, maybe pop culture virtual exhibitions that can be seen from anyone around the world? Because those are picking up steam and get, are getting quite exciting now. Yeah, well, I mean, we've of course talked about it, but we very deliberately haven't done that because, well, for two reasons. One is because we really believe in the power of specificity of a location and people coming to Dubai to have an experience, but also we really wanted to make sure that you were having like a multi-sensory experience. So we really incorporated a lot of elements of sound, smell, touch, so that you kind of were physically rewarded for being there as opposed to something that you feel like you could have virtually. and you know, wouldn't feel particularly different. I love that. Mm. Uh, Brendan, I would like to say I pretty much live in the Museum of the Future. I've hosted many events there and I, I've experienced it for myself. And one thing that blows on my mind every single time I'm there is that there is something there for everyone. I'm talking about from kids all the way through to the elderly, walking through, enjoying it. Are you very intentional with that? And the second part of that question is, how are you reaching out more to the younger generations to come through, not just to educate themselves, but to be entertained as well? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we certainly have made it you know, priority to be as welcoming as possible because the future really belongs to everybody and everyone should feel that they matter and that they can contribute to it in a meaningful way. So we, that's very intentional for us. For young people, of course, it's extremely important because they're going to spend the most time in the future. Um, so yeah, young people are a massive influence on everything we do. And so we are really, one of the challenges of the museum is trying to find a language that really feels contemporary and feels current for the experience of young people. And so gaming is important because people spend so much time in like virtual environments and open world multiplayer games is how a lot of people socialize now, young people. So we really look at that closely and, and um, you know, receive advice from a lot of young people because we really want to somehow come up with a language that can on the one hand speak to older people who have a certain experience, but also deliver something that feels authentic for young people because like I say, the future is really uh, you know, all about young people. I'm actually interested to know, Brendan, because uh, Museum of the Future, obviously very strongly connected with the uh, Dubai Future Foundation. And um, obviously there's a lot of interconnection there. And I know the UAE is really pushing or really jumping on board and innovating with virtual reality. So how are we thinking that we're gonna incorporate virtual reality into the museum, into gaming, but also into our day-to-day -day lives? Well, so one of the challenges of virtual reality, if I'll give you a, like a very practical answer, for a place like the museum, it's actually very hard to do it because we have 3,500 visitors a day and it's very hard to onboard that many people through VR. However, we use VR to plan what we're doing, to test what we're doing, to understand that we, you can create a kind of digital twin of what you're making in, in VR so that you can have a really 
you know, without having built it yet, a really strong sense of what the thing is going to be. So that's like one aspect of it. But in terms of like going forward, and particularly Dubai's contribution to VR, I think it's extremely exciting because, um, you know, up until now, the the number of places that have contributed to VR has been pretty limited. And there's sort of a desperate need for new voices that, that produce new interpretations of what VR can be, what a virtual experience should be, what a virtual environment can feel like and look like. So all of that is really exciting. And we, you know, with our with our partners in uh, DFF, Dubai Future Foundation, are ex very supportive of it and trying to push it, you know, as fast as we can. Now, since Faris has been talking about what your plans are, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you have planned for 2024? Um, well, you know, the, the, the if you can tell us, if you yeah, can. is it a secret? <laughs> no, it's kind of it's funny. It's awkward. I was actually saying before I got in, there's actually two things I would like to announce, but I can't. Oh. <laughs> so it's and they're so excited. okay. Just announce one of them. It's a, just one of them. Or give uh, us a hint. No. So basically, you know, what the important thing, interesting thing about the museum on the one hand is that because we have visitors every day, we try to respond to them. So we try to develop new things that are really directly coming from how they feedback on you know whether or not they understand something, whether they whether they, they would like something, um, you know, a different kind of subject matter, a different kind of experience. So we're always evolving the overall experience. But the other really important and exciting thing about the museum is our public program, where we're able to host conversations about things like gaming and try to kind of be at the center of important conversations about where things like gaming or, or prompt engineering, as you showed earlier, where these things are, are headed and what the potential is and, and to be sort of a center and a home for people who want to like actively talk about and work on those things. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see until he makes the formal announcement. <laughs> but Brendan, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciated you. Thank you very much. And we will be checking out the Museum of the Future really soon. Now, today's spotlight is on a home automation company making smart homes an affordable reality for everyone through cutting edge technology and quality design solutions. This is Trodac. Hi, I'm Tahir Kapadia and I am a managing partner at Trodac. We are a home automation integration company and a lighting design consultant uh, here in Dubai. So when we started Trodac, uh, there were a few agendas that we had and we, we had some gaps that we were looking to fill. Most importantly, energy conservation by the use of home automation technologies. There are a lot of competitors in the market that we are trying to compete with, but our main USP and the gap that we're trying to fill is uh, providing our clientele a very unique um, energy efficient solution to their automation in which they can save energy while enjoying the luxury of having an automation in their homes. The biggest challenge any automation company would have is that this industry is an ever-growing industry. You always have to be at the top of your game to be able to uh, be ahead with the technologies that come out. You can never be outdated with what you're providing to your clients because every day there would be a newer technology that would come and you would have to you know, integrate that to a, part, to a new project that you're doing. Dubai is really known for its glitz and glamour. And uh, the industry that we are in right now is an industry for luxuries. So people who enjoy luxuries would love to do automations and Dubai is the best place to provide this kind of a service. Coming up, we are changing the course of education with the latest game from the team at the UAE Year Of. Plus, there is music coming your way. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> 